Last night's disappointing Senate a vote codifying the redefinition of marriage, it definitely has implications as we were talking about culturally, as the law is a teacher, uh, but it also has implications legally and among the more troubling aspects is the claim made by several senators that the bill does contain religious liberty protections. Is that true or not? Joining me now to help provide some clarity to address that is Travis Weber. He's our vice president for public and government affairs at Family Research Council. Travis, good to see you. Thank you. Now, you addressed this last night with Tony on the Pray Vote Stand broadcast, uh, but for those who may have missed it, here's a clip of Republican Wyoming Senator Cynthia Lummis claiming that the bill does have religious liberty protections. Let's play clip seven. This bill is intended to enshrine a national policy of respect for all views surrounding marriage and to enact some of the strongest religious liberty protections since the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in 1993. This legislation also ensures that religious liberty will have more of a central role in future debates in our courts and in, bill and in the halls of Congress. Travis Weber, is this some of the strongest religious freedom protections we've seen since 1993? Hardly. I mean, these, these remarks are foolish and dangerous. And in addition to just being wrong, you know, the bill uh, inciting this as somehow a national public policy in favor of uh, all views, she cites one very weak statement in the findings sort of portion of the bill. But the reality is we have to look at the debate surrounding this issue. Senators, including Senator Lummis, had opportunity to protect religious liberty by supporting Senator Lee's amendment. They failed to do so, willfully chose to not support his amendment, and instead agreed with a, a totally weak um, a section of language that they claim supports religious liberty, but in reality would support religious educational institutions and churches only if they're engaged in the principal purpose of furthering religion, only in the area of solemnization of marriages, leaving out all sorts of issues, basically everything we've seen over the past seven years since Obergefell, including the Jack Phillips type cases and many other situations, leaving those hanging in the wind. So willfully doing this and then going onto the floor as she did after the vote and saying uh, this supports religious liberty, it's not only astounding, it's foolish and dangerous because we're now gonna be paving the way towards more religious freedom violations, especially if people believe Senator Lummis and think this is somehow some sort of protection, thus allowing their guard down. But they can't do that. We have to be clear-eyed about the lack of protections in this bill. Um, I, I hope I'm wrong, but I fear that we will see challenges that this bill uh, fuels in the months and years ahead. Travis, I think you make a really important point there because the proponents of the bill say they are concerned about religious freedom and they threw out some language that they claimed offered those protections. And then the people that they said they wanted to protect said, hey, here's what we need in terms of religious freedom and protections. And then they said, no, you can't have that. Is that just prima facie evidence that they don't really want to protect the people that they claim they are trying to protect? It could be, it's either a willful denial of a refusal to protect them, or a, a severe delusion that uh, somehow th they're wrong and, and the people pushing this weak language in the bill were right, uh, you know, because there were people pushing it. And, um, and, and we've heard that, that somehow this is a protection. Um, I find that hard to believe, though, in light of the, the length and the level of debate and discussion that has surrounded this bill in the past few months. Senator Lee was very clear, sending a letter to his colleagues, asking them to support his amendment, showing why it's necessary. There were three 60-vote threshold votes on this bill in the Senate in the last week. All 12 Republican senators who voted against, uh, voted for this bill, voted for it three times. Three times they sided with Democrats, sided against religious freedom, uh, against all the concerns that we and other groups have been raising. Um, I find it hard to believe they, they really, um, this was anything other than a willful uh, throwing of religious freedom under the bus. And what they've done here is uh, they want to claim this is a great protection. The reality is we were better off without this bill and without the supposed protection that it is. The bill legalizes same-sex marriage legislatively as a national, that will be used as a national public policy marker, throws in this weak language in the bill. 
This language is, is like, you know, it's a little bump in the face of a massive boulder of this bill. You know, and, and so in, when, when recognizing that reality, uh, you can't claim that little bump is somehow an improvement because that boulder is going to smash whatever protections this bill offers, which are very minimal. That situation is not a win-win-win. <laughs> you know, and so these senators trying to explain this away are trying to really make the Christian and religious freedom advocacy community believe that they really meant well. Uh, we're not buying it. We can't be buying it. As the bill goes back to the House, House members need to understand there are serious problems with this. They can't buy this as religious freedom protecting. And uh, the Republic, no Republicans should be supporting this in the House. Uh, last vote was rushed. It was quick. But by now, the debate and the issues are known. And, and House members need to take a stand against this bill. Travis, since the vote in the Senate, there have been reports that up to 30 Republican senators would have been inclined to vote for this, but for the public reaction to the bill. What's your reaction to that? Well, if, if true, that, that's alarming in a sense of those senators being out of touch with their constituents and perhaps too in touch with wanting to be thought well of and, and just the wanting to have a pat on the back uh, from the circles of elite in opinion in which they're running. You know, obviously, we don't, we don't know how this would have played out in an alternative scenario, but I am concerned that um, you know, senators heard from their constituents on this one. And yet they chose to disregard those constituents. And you had Senators Sullivan and Lummis sending, uh, putting out lengthy defenses of why this somehow protected religious freedom that obviously required work to put together. And they were citing authorities, including uh, religious groups claiming to, to represent the mantle of religious liberty, the, the Council of Christian Colleges and Universities, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist, and others, uh, the LDS Church. Um, so they're going through all the work to defend their, their position. That shows they were hearing from people concerned about religious liberty and were trying to explain it away. Um, I, I'm concerned that, that we would be in a situation where even more senators would consider supporting this. You know, but as Denny was saying in the previous segment, we also have our work cut out for us in explaining the value of our positions. We believe what we believe because it's the right thing, but it also flir right. causes flourishing to society. We need to get Travis, to work explaining that. We got less than a minute left, about 30 seconds. It moves to the House now. What can people do as it advances? Yeah, we, we, uh, they need to call the House, call the Capitol switchboard number for the House, let their member know, pose this bill. Do not be deluded in thinking it protects religious liberty. Uh, they can also check out frcaction.org slash marriage. We're here to help you engage. Tell the House members uh, oppose this bill. frcaction.org slash marriage. Travis Weber, thanks for your time. Thank you.